Uh, I'm Pete Lambert. I'm the Telford Projects Officer for the Shropshire Wildlife Trust. So I'm the warden for Granville. Uh, and I work with the Friends of Granville and Telford Reeking Council, who own Granville, to look after it. As a nature reserve, it's protected from development that would damage the wildlife interests. And because it's a nature reserve, we discourage those sorts of things. We also look after the people that come to. We tell them to lock their cars <laughs> so they don't get broken into. What we're going to do, we're going to take a little walk down here. This used to be a railway track back up until the late 1970s. Back in the car park behind us was a marshalling yard and a turntable for the engines. And they're all part of the sort of Granville Colliery Complex. So a busy industrial area. And in 30 years, this place has transformed from a busy industrial complex into what we've got today. So why do you think it's important to have a nature reserve? It's important that we make it clear to people like a developer or the council or local government that this area is not for housing, it's not for in factories. This place here is for wildlife. Uh, it's for either the plants on it, the insects that live on the plants, it's for them. That's what this place is for. So that's your view of the Granville then? As a nature reserve, what's interesting about the Granville is its history. Years and years ago, let's say 300 years ago, this was part of a, a hunting forest. And way back into medieval time, four or five hundred years ago, this is an area of wild, small fields, hedgerows, big old trees. 250 years ago, this area gets transformed. They discover they've got coal, they've got iron, they've got clay, and the Industrial Revolution kicks off. We end up on this side here. This is a canal, and this is the bed of one of the second oldest industrial canals in the country. Railways, tramways. On the right hand, see the soil underneath these trees here? black and this was a colliery pit mound so this is barnyard pit mound and on top of it was a couple of shafts and on the other side of it was an engine house by the 1860s that had all gone again these were starting to be closed they'd had their day and nature is relentless nature is this wild and powerful force and just will not be held back so grass arrive trees arrive soil starts to develop on the old pit mounds you get little oak seedlings will take off and eventually on top of the pit mounds you have an oak woodland you have bluebells will make it their way back in in these little sunny patches here we might be lucky we get a speckled wood butterfly now none of these plants have been planted they've arrived here all by themselves as meadow buttercup creeping better buttercup none of these plants are planted they've all arrived here under their own steam and that's part of the beauty, the natural beauty of Granville, is you've got this man-made environment. The humps and bumps here are all made by man, but the green cloth that covers it is done by nature. And all the variations... So what's your favourite part of the Granville? My favourite part of the Granville is a little field called Muxton Marsh. It's very wet, and today, and for the next couple of weeks, it's covered in orchids. It's very, very beautiful. Do you have any plans for the future of this Granville? There's nowhere to tell you what's going on here. So a part of our future plans is that we want to let people know what was here and some of the things they might encounter when they're out for a walk. So I brought you here, and this is Wax Hill Meadow. Nature's just colonised and occupied this space with lots of pretty stuff. What's unusual about this is, in other places, this would have a house on would still have an industrial factory on, would be lost. But because this is a nature reserve, it's preserved. So is this what you think makes Granville special? This is part of it. It's a whole range of things. Special places are easily lost. A moment sort of careless neglect, or a vehicle, or digging it up. And part of the reason that it's special is because it's been left. It's been allowed to do its own thing. Here at the Granville, you have strips of old, old canal, still got water in. Love We've that. got old railway beds. We've got a whole, whole sort of range of bug life. There's damselflies and dragonflies. And it's very varied. Uh, it's quite accessible too. So if, say, you use a wheelchair, uh, poorly sighted, the Granville's a really good spot too. Do you think you'll have 
like a guided walk? A guided walk with somebody else is quite nice because you get lots of information you didn't have uh, and also you, you, there's no f- fear of getting lost. Yeah. So the Friends of Cranfield, which is an important part of the picture here, uh, live locally. And together we've been talking about telling the story of Cranfield uh, and the way we want to do that to start off with is create a heritage trail because there's lots of remains here. So the trail is going to be, have three trails. One is a, a multi-user trail from the two car parks, there's one in the south and one in the north. And there's a nice level connection between those two. Then there's a slightly r- longer route to take us around the whole of Granville to explore the freehold colliery, and that will also take in some of the heathlands and all the other mixtures of habitats we've got here. And then there's a longer trail of about seven miles, and that will allow people to start in let's say Rockadine Wood, or uh, up to St George's and back. It's a nice big circuit there. Do you think it's dangerous in the Granville if you don't know where you're going? Potentially. The Granville deep mine, the main shaft, dropped about a thousand foot to reach the coal underneath. There's some little spots where if you're digging or you're in a hole, probably to stop digging and take care. Generally, we've found most of the problems, and it's a good spot to explore. And also, with it being a nature reserve, we actively look for danger. Do you reckon the wildlife has changed much since the mines closed? Loads, yeah. What, like the amount or different sort? The amount of where they are yeah. has changed. Uh, with this area being busy, we've got, so we've got buildings here, we had a, a railway there. Then this sort of uh, little bit of woodland might have been over there, you know, far away. But as this has shut down, it's come over here. So it's where the wildlife can be.